People who have witnessed a there's not going to be a wedding moment following a bachelor slash bachelorette party, what went down? Obligatory not me. I worked at a music venue in the Detroit area that was also a popular wedding reception location. Came into work one week in the fall when pretty much every weekend is booked solid with weddings and noticed Saturday was open, no one scheduled. Talk to the wedding planner, she tells me the groom cancelled. Ot. Talk to wedding planner's younger brother, who was our head bar back. He tells me that the groom, excited for the wedding, left work at lunch on Friday, bought a nice bottle of wine, and headed home to surprise his bride-to-be. Except, he was the one in for a surprise, as he walked into his new house, to hear sounds coming from their bedroom. He walked in to find his bride in bed with another man. His dad. We tried to talk him into doing a big fuck you party, because we'd never fill the space and there was no refund, but he declined. Edit. A lot of people are speculating where I worked. It was the Crow Football Room. If you haven't been, go see a show there. It's a phenomenal venue. A stripper came to my buddy Jack's bachelor party and proceeded to put a condom on a dildo and bang herself in front of the crowd. It was awesome. At the end of the night, Jack, the groom 2B was cleaning up a bit and put the condom wrapper in his pocket absent mindedly. The next day his fiancée Kristen was doing laundry and found the condom wrapper and freaked out thinking that he had cheated on her. Jack tried to reassure her and explain the situation that the stripper had used it on herself. Kristen is a really cool lady and takes it pretty well and calms down, but she can't quite shake the feeling. So, Jack tells her to call me to confirm what happened. Kristen calls and asks so what happened last night. Mind you, I'm totally in the dark about the situation, and Jack and I had never discussed what we are supposed to tell Kristen, so I totally downplay it. Not much, the boys just had a few beers, and smoked some cigars I hear you lying piece of sheet click oops. Sister of the groom chatted with the sister of the bride. Just casual conversation, but it came to light that almost 100% of what the bride had said besides her name was a complete lie. Sister of the groom calls him up and says he really needs to figure out if this is right. A few fights and some long thinking later the groom leaves her and leaves town. It got worse though, turns out pretty much all the bride's friends had been lied to as well. They all stopped talking to her. Edit, I replied below with some examples of the lies, but seems to have gotten lost in the thread pasting that onto here, just the normal details of a person's life. Where she went to high school, instead of a boring suburban school it was an expensive private school. Claimed her family had a ton of money she was set to inherit. Claimed they had a home in Hawaii. Faked knowing people in the same industry. Small to large, didn't really matter almost all of it was fake from what I heard. I didn't really know her, but we were at the same company. People I worked with used to work in her department, so I just heard most of it second hand. And no idea how she thought this would work for the rest of her life. I honestly think she had a mental condition. From what I understand she tried to rekindle the friendships, but quickly started to lie again, and that was it. She quit the company shortly after all this went down. There's a story that goes around, I can't vouch for the truth of it or not. Call it an urban legend. First of all, if you've never been to a Jewish wedding, the way it goes is, first they have the reception, with the bride and groom in separate rooms, then the ceremony, then family goes away to sit for pictures, while the guests sit down to eat, then the bride and groom come in, and the dancing starts. In between the ceremony and the pictures, though, is what's called yichud which doesn't really translate, but it approximately means isolation together the bride and groom lock themselves in a room, and are observed by two reliable witnesses outside the door, to have stayed there in long enough to have consummated the marriage, although nobody actually does it there. It's considered deckless. This is what actually solemnizes the marriage. Well, one of three things, the other two are signing a marriage contract, called a ketubab, and transfer of a piece of chattel property, traditionally a ring, though it can be other things, from the groom to the bride. So, after the yichud, the bride comes out and announces, sorry everyone, the wedding's off, we'll be getting a divorce, and we are returning all the gifts. Except for the bedroom set, where I caught my new husband trying it out with my sister last week. So, there are far worse stories here in this very thread. 
What makes this one noteworthy? Well, think about this. She knew about the episode before the wedding. Why'd she go through with it? Because under Jewish law, if you've once been married to a woman, even after divorcing her you aren't allowed to marry her sister at any time until your first wife has died. By going through with the ceremony, she in effect locked her sister out of ever being able to get together with her soon to be ex. I'm a musician. I work on an infamous street for drunken revelry and debauchery. One night, a bachelor party came in around the same time as a bachelorette party. The show I work with does special things like funny songs for special events, so I bring them both up at the same time to do something special. In the middle of this, on stage, they start making out. And they do. Not. Stop. I finish my routine as best I can, and get them off stage. Later, as I'm looking around the audience, my eye catches on them again. They're in the back corner just going at it, while their respective parties hang out up near the front of the stage. And they are really getting into it. Hands down pants and up skirts. At some point they disappear. I take a break and head to the restroom. It's locked. I hear a woman screaming from within. Not moaning. Not saying. Screaming fuck me harder. I sit in the lounge area outside the bathroom for about 10 minutes. The bachelor and bachelorette come out, looking a bit disheveled, but not too bad. They see me, and immediately want to chat, for some reason. People always want to get to know the musicians here, there's curiously no guilt on them at all. I have to piss like a racehorse, but this is too good to pass up. Come to find out, they both are getting married to other people, but know each other from having lived in the same small town of about 5,000 all their lives. They ran into each other for the first time, since high school graduation at our bar and old feelings emerged that neither had ever attempted to act on. They don't stay along, and as they leave I hear the bachelor say I have my own room, let's go there. The rest of the party stays till the show is over, partying hard and having fun. Possibly the best bachelor slash bachelorette parties I've had. Usually bachelor parties get too drunk and bachelorette parties devolve into crying fits and arguments. In a hoe, I wind up seeing the bachelor and bachelorette together at our bar and out in the street every night for four nights. Always holding hands and or getting frisky. They came back a little over a year later. They got married here in our town to each other instead of who they were engaged to that fateful night. Most of their respective bachelor slash bachelorette show up for the event. With this story, I always feel torn. Did I participate in the destruction of two relationships, or did I facilitate the meeting of two soulmates? Edit, I thought I might eventually have to disclose what street it was, or that it would be obvious, but now I see there are so many. Edit 2, as many of you have guessed, and keep guessing, it is in fact Bourbon Street in New Orleans, Louisiana. I won't speak to the type of bar or the specific place. Nala is a crazy enough place without adding reddit stalkers. Friend invites me to his wedding. He and fiance are fairly poor, have lived together for years. They are both semi disabled, his is PTSD, hers is physical, and on fixed incomes, and live in a somewhat expensive area. They have three gift registries. Target, Masses, Crate and Barrel, and a huge invite list, over 300 friends slash family members. All the stuff on the registries is standard stuff like towels, coffee cups, flatware, etc. Anyway, people fly out, get ready for wedding. Two days before wedding, his bachelor party and friend gets drunk and admits that she's not really his fiance. They are just roommates and they have no intention of getting married they just needed the stuff. They're going to cancel the wedding tomorrow and keep all the gifts. Had to protect him from getting his ass kicked by about two dozen people. Then had to have the fiancé come clean to everyone since he was too hungover. They ended up returning most of the gifts to people, but a surprising number of people let them keep the gifts. As his grandfather said, if you needed these things that badly to lie like this, you must have been very desperate. Buddy's bachelor party. Bachelor got super wasted, and the FOB was shocked, and did not know the well-mannered slash polite young man marrying his daughter was in his eyes a raging alcoholic. The bachelor got so drunk, he began to let some secrets slip about his relationship with the bride. The FOB was a bit old school in his thinking. The bachelor let the following slip. 
His daughter was basically living with him since junior year of college and her apartment in college was for show for the FOB. Even though he is drinking a lot, his future wife can out drink him 2 to 1. His future wife has cute tattoo on her inner thigh and that all his slash her friends had seen it when they went skinny dipping at the FOB's lake house. We had a massive graduation party at his lake house when him and his wife were in Europe for two weeks. The bride is into some kinky stuff. That drew the line. The FOB declared there would not be a wedding. Where has he gone wrong raising his daughters? Then he said his life is faked. He has four daughters total and this was his oldest and who he considered his best behave. Edit. Spelling error or errors. They were married. Peer pressure. After the wedding at the reception, the new Liwats took forever to show up. They were nearly an hour late. When they did arrive they were arguing loudly the entire time. They got introduced, and we all clapped as per tradition, and they sat down at the main table in a half. Sometime between the appetizer and the main course the argument started again. The groom stormed off, and my girlfriend and I were nosy, so we went to see what was up. He ended up in the hotel lobby on his cell phone. We thought nothing of it, and we were about to go back, when the wife shows up still obviously in her wedding dress, and continues to ream him out. Now for the first time, we can hear what the argument is about. He had invited his ex to the wedding. She showed up to the ceremony and that threw the bride off. Apparently also, he had cheated on the new wife with the ex-girlfriend several times with the last time, being only about a month prior to the wedding. Additionally, the ex slash girlfriend slash mistress was on her way to come pick up the new husband to take him away from the new bride cause she was acting crazy. According to the groom. After a couple minutes of watching this train wreck of an argument, a sheety rust bucket sedan shows up with the ex-girlfriend in it. The groom gets into the car with his ex, or whatever the fact she is, and they drive off. Last words went to the bride though who screamed at him as he tore off, well I guess I'm going to go back to faking your brother then you as whole. So, oh, they're no longer married now. An ex-girlfriend was at a bachelorette party at a CD male strip club. She came home from the party and said well, the wedding is off. The bride was getting the usual treatment, sitting in a chair with strippers gyrating around her, whipping dongs around, and then one put whipped cream on his cork and invited her to lick it off which she did, with her tonsils, until the stripper shoots his load all over the front of her I'm the bride t-shirt. About this moment, the bride kind of comes to her senses, looks around and sees like 20 of her friends pointing cell phones at her according and taking photos and starts freaking out. My girlfriend says she started screaming at everyone you better delete that sheet, and generally having a full rage meltdown, which is apparently tough to take seriously when you're basted in strippages. This tale of modern romance closes very shortly later with the bride's phone ringing a call from her fiancé, who has already received photos from her friends of his bride to be with a cork stuffed in her mouth. So, not as extreme as some of the others. Bachelorette party is three days before the destination wedding. My sister, the bride, is taken by her friends for a dinner. I'm at the bachelor party. We start getting weird messages. Garbled texts and then we get a call from a local hospital. Food poisoning. The groom goes yeah, this isn't happening boys, and we figure one more short, and we'll make our way to the hospital. Never underestimate the determination of a bride and bridesmaids. The wedding was delayed a day, to the Sunday, and she walked down the aisle with enough gravel shoved up her bum and shot into her veins, that I'm not sure she knew where she was, let alone that it was a wedding. The bridesmaids were all various shades of grey, green and ill. It was open bar, and to avoid spoiling the party, the husband and groomsmen stayed back and kept drinking. My sister was so tired she and the bridesmaids took another dose of gravel and all went to sleep in their hotel room. My mother, who is a retired IQ nurse, went to take care of them. So, not as dire as others, but I bet there was nowhere near as much vomit and fesses as the others. Hi there, part time wedding planner here. I have a few of these. 1. Obligatory Sech 1. The bachelor party and the bachelorette party were being held in the same hotel in New Orleans. I tried to get them to do separate venues, but knew the group discount would cover an extra day in Carmel. They begin at 8 pm and collide drunkenly at about 3 am. 
It was some kind of drunken fist fight come orgy and everyone was so ashamed the next morning they called it off. Good news everyone. They made up six months later and got married. They picked something simple, like their backyard this time. 2. Faking weird sech 1. Bachelorette party turned out to be homestuck themed, complete with homestuck male strippers. Please for the love of Christ do not ask where I found those. It got weird and the groom walked in on the bride riding a candy con colored horn. Groom noped the fuck out. 3. The best one. So the couple has been sleeping together for a few years, she gets pregnant, and decide to get married. Months of planning go by, and she begins to show. Bride's parents would write the fuck out, call her a slutched, and forbid her to get married. They cancel the wedding, steal her parents' car to elope, and torch the garage on their way out. It was magnificent. I did not get paid. Several years ago, I got a phone call from the maid of honor for a wedding I was going to attend, as a guest, two weeks hence. She was flustered, but managed to get out there's no wedding, groom called it off. He's in love with someone else. Well, I didn't press. I was friends with both, so I knew that the full details would eventually make their way back to me. Oh, and boy did they. Turns out, a couple weeks before the wedding, groom called bride and said he was coming over. They needed to talk. When he got to her apartment, he broke down in tears and confessed that he was in love with someone else. He loved her, but couldn't marry her because he didn't love her in the way a bride deserves. There was much crying and shouting over it all, but eventually the bride recovered from the news enough to ask him who he was in love with. Well, groom said, it's bride's brother. The wedding was definitely off at that point. Now, five or six years later, groom and bride's brother are married and happy. Though, I lost contact with bride shortly after her wedding plans went tits up. So I'm not sure if she ever forgave the boys for that one. So a group of 12 or so guys and a few girls have been having a weekly poker night for more than two years. One of the guys and one of the girls hit it off, get engaged and are going to be married. Now both of these people regularly drink and party like normal people. However for reasons we were never able to fully understand the bride to be decides that groom is not going to have a bachelor party like just ain't gonna happen. Groom, whipped apparently, reluctantly agrees and informs the rest of the group that all ideas are now off the table. For proper framing the last three people from that card group that got married all had bachelor weekends in Vegas, innocent fun, no hokers, and this groom attended all of them. The group just isn't satisfied with this outcome. At one of the poker nights we hatch a plan to kidnap him from his house and take him to a local bar, two miles from his house, to drink, play for some darts. That's it, just one night with the guys is all we wanted. The plan was executed perfectly. I posed as the idiot at the wrong house for cards. They hosted every third week or so, while two gents waited in the shadows. When he answered the door I gave the I'm here for card speech and a few seconds later we had him in the back of the minivan on the way to the bar. We texted one of the other girls, her friend, to let her know that we heard him and would return him by morning, until shade by other females. All hell broke loose. Within 10 minutes of getting to the bar about half of our phones had lit up with messages along the lines of the wedding is off if you don't bring him home now. We had confiscated his phone in the napping and reluctantly gave it back to him 30 minutes later he appears from the shadows and says guys I got to go home, can someone drop me off? With great protest we did. The group returned to the bar and attempted to drown our sorrows of now dead to us friend. About an hour later one of us gets a call from the groom. Says he's three blocks from his house and needs a ride back to the bar. We learned that he went home. Had a knockdown drag out fight with the soon to be wife, drank about half a bottle of scotch and then bolted. He rejoined the party, and we had a good three hours of fun playing fuss, and arts and eating peanuts. Cut to midnight. One of the bride's friends shows up at the bar. Tells us bride has bags packed, and is leaving him, if we don't return him. Mind you bar close is 1am, so he'd have been home in an hour anyway. So we close up the tabs and drive him back to his house. She's on the stoop, suitcases and all, screaming at us, I was filming, it was bad, screaming at him just out of her damn mind stupid angry. We pour him in the house and book it with our tails between our legs. The next few weeks were terrible. 
Goon goes non-communicado with the group. Groom's father was to be the best man. After hearing all the fuss about a night with the guys he respectfully backed out of the position saying I cannot support this marriage, if this is how you will be treated devastating blow. Still the wedding went on. The group was still invited, and we all showed, it was terribly awkward. Time passed and wounds healed. Poker was being held again, even at their house. When someone finally got brave enough to ask her what the big deal was she explained. I was in the shower when you took him. For 30 minutes I had no idea where he went. Took us a bit to pass the word, we had planned to play a board game, and when I got out of the shower he was just gone. I was terrified, the front door was still open, I thought the worst. It justified a little, but after she knew we were just down the damp street at a normal bar, what was the big deal? Oh that, that was just a power play, and she needed the groom to understand that their relationship was more important than one night of fun with the guys, or something. Anyway, they are still married, and have two little girls. As far as we can tell everyone is happy. I still hate the woman with a passion, because she's a self-righteous, hypocrite, man-hating, man-controlling beast, but that's just me. TLDR kidnapped groom from his house, went to local bar, bride freaks threatens to move out. Dad backs out of best man. Marriage happens, they are happy. A few years back, one of my older brothers was getting married. In our family, it is tradition to have one of the older members serve as ring bearer. My brother chose our uncle Steve. He was that uncle for us, if you know what I mean. The one that every family seems to have. The one who makes inappropriate jokes and drinks a bit too much at family functions, and gets banned from Canada for trading counterfeit maple syrup. Despite all that, my brother chose him anyway. So the day of the bachelor party arrives. My brother had invited all his friends plus all the male members of our family. Things were going pretty well at first. We did your typical bachelor party stuff, played some mini golf, hit up Ben and Jerry's, went to matinee showing of what to expect when you're expecting, it was worse than I expected, and the film itself didn't prepare me for this realization, etc. The only snag up to that point was a bit of awkwardness that occurred when Steve found out one of Beverly's buddies drove a BMW 328i. To this day, Steve has a great hatred for German automobiles. It comes from when he owned a Volkswagen Rarature. His experience with the car was rather negative. Something about its supercharger disintegrating. Ever since, he never misses an opportunity to rant about his disdain for all things Teutonic. Other than that, the party was going smoothly. Things took a turn when Steve, having appointed himself master of ceremonies and day drinking, when the party kicked off, suggested we go to a place called the Pink Lady. It turned out to be a gentleman's club, one located in the woods several miles down a dirt road away from the city. My brother's mouth was a fap when we walked in. The place was absolutely filthy. Felt like I needed a tetanus shot just from breathing the air. It smelled like the Hudson River during low tide. Tattooed, brawny biker gang types, appearing to be fresh from a lengthy incarceration, littered the bar area. They were the type of people you wouldn't want to meet in a dark alley. And that was just the dancers. Still, no one wanted to be a negative mancy, so we all grit our teeth and tried to make the most of it. Not 10 minutes in, Steve started ordering shots, because that's who he is. Shots led to lap dances which led to a skeevy backroom with sticky floors and cheap champagne. It was a viscous cycle. Every last one of us ended up sheet-faced hammered, puking out our mouths and other places as well. We had to take a cab back to home. There, we decided to forego outdoor grilling under the moonlight that had been planned, and instead passed out, our stomachs as empty as our wallets. The next morning, we discovered that we'd lost more than money at the strip club, Steve had managed to lose my brother's wedding ring, as well. Why he thought it would be a good idea to bring it in the first place, I'll never know. Fortunately, he at least had a notion of just how he misplaced the thing. Steve, my brother, and me went back to the pink lady to retrieve it later that day, had to slip the owner $50, just so we could examine the dancers who'd been there the previous day. By examine, I mean Steve looked at their buttholes. You see, he has a thing for inserting various objects into the backsides of strippers. Since he's such a good tipper, they usually don't mind. Problem is, he goes too deep on occasion, 
so it's not uncommon for the dancer to not be able to retrieve whatever Steve puts up there until a day or two later. Anyway, he's looking at all those bit holes, really eyeballing them closely, even smelling some, and notices one of them is a sort of bluish green algae color. Now anyone who knows anything about but holes knows the healthy ones are supposed to have a rusty, purple hue. It's at that point that Steve remembers how cheap my brother can be. Naturally, he wouldn't buy a 24k gold ring. Best he'd go for would be 12k. And that kind of ring is just the type that would turn a brown eye blue. After sanitizing his fingers with olive juice, Steve went to work on removing the ring from that stripper. After 15 minutes of poking and prodding and expanding the her all cavity with a bellows that was laying around for some reason, there wasn't a chimney in sight. The stripper let forth a deep guttural ripper. The ring shot out of her at an incredible rate of speed, as well as $1.73 in change, a key fob to an Audi, and a blueberry Tootsie Pop still several licks away from the center. Steve left only one of those treasures behind. After leaving the club, me and my brother decided it would be a bad idea to let anyone know about the ring's misadventures. We got together and told Steve not to say anything, ever, about what went down at the bachelor party. Although he appeared to be devoting the lion's share of his attention to devouring a blueberry Tootsie Pop, he seemed to have gotten the message. Or so we thought. At the rehearsal dinner the night before the wedding was to take place, Steve got pissed drunk on sangria and let slip the strange journey of the ring that was supposed to grace his nephew's fin case finger the rest of her life. The bride-to-be was livid. By the end of the night, everyone was whispering there's not going to be a wedding. Sure enough, the guests were called the next morning and told not to come. I at least got to return the blender that was supposed to be their wedding gift and buy a nice ottoman with the money instead, so things worked out pretty well for me. Worked out for my brother too. He got married a couple years later to a nice young lady that wasn't squeamish regarding matters of the fetched. My cousin was a young newly minted US marine and was set to marry some girl he met at a gas station near base. She had no job, no real aspirations, and seemed only interested in his benefits, but she was putty out, and he was happy. Nobody in the family wanted this to happen, but we were all afraid to push too hard and risk alienating him, so we all, including his parents, just went along with it figuring that it would fizzle out well before the wedding date. Well that didn't happen until the actual day of the wedding. On the morning of the wedding, she informs him that her best friend will be coming to live with them for the first year in order to help her acclimate to living on her own. He tells her that there is no way that this can happen because he lives in base housing and there are strict rules against it. Apparently this was a deal breaker and she backed out with not too much protest from him. We later found out that he had been having misgivings but was to chicken sheets to call it off himself. The reception was bought and paid for already, and my cousin's family were all very relieved that the wedding was off, so anyone who felt like sticking around after the non-ceremony had a sheet kicking time. Even though the non-bride's family weren't there, I think we still drank almost all of the booze. Oh man, so I have a good story. Night before the wedding, rehearsal dinner is at a distillery. Everyone gets hammered. I mean everyone, even the grandparents, all extremely intoxicated. The groom's dad was so drunk that when he tries to give his speech to the couple-to-be, he cannot even talk nor stand up. After the rehearsal dinner, the whole wedding party decides it is a good idea to go out drinking some more at some karaoke bar. At the bar the groom's little sister, who was in high school at the time, randomly decides to get on stage to try her hand at drunken karaoke. However, instead of singing a song, she just starts talking about how she wants to fuck all the groomsmen. Promptly her family rips her off stage and takes her home. Later in the night, everyone is having a great drunken time, but then the bride drunkenly tells the groom that she is not sure if she loves him anymore. The groom becomes enraged, leaves the bar, attempting to walk, stumble, back to his hotel, which wasn't anywhere near the bar. The groom's brother runs after him trying to calm him down, and the groom ends up getting into a huge fist fight with his brother slash best man. The next day, the groom and best man look like they had both been hit by a truck. For some reason the wedding is still on. The groom's mother decides the only way to fix things is by trying to cover the wounds with Macup. 
So now, you have the groom and best man looking, like Casper the friendly ghost up on the altar, and then in walks the bride, drunk off her ass. They end up both saying I do, but weeks later, as expected, they get divorced. Ends up that before the wedding, while the groom was on his bachelor party weekend, they met a bunch of girls who were going to the same place for a bachelorette party. The groom hocks up with one of the girls he meets. Long story short, now he is married to the girl who he cheated on his ex fiance slash wife with, and has been for the past 7 years. It is always funny to think back on how much of a sheet show that wedding was. This happened several years ago. My ex was the best man in a wedding for his best friend. The night of the bachelor slash bachelorette party the men and women each had their own get together, and then were supposed to meet up with each other later that night at a bar downtown. I was with the ladies, and after our party, we got into the party bus and headed down. Bright called groom, and told him to leave to meet us there. We waited and waited. Groom is a no-show. Bride demands that I call my then boyfriend and find out where they were. Boyfriend reports that they made a pit stop at a strip club. Bride and groom had an agreement that he would not. Bride obviously flips out and grabs my phone demands that my ex order everyone to leave the club. Ex tries to explain that it is not going to be easy to get 40 highly intoxicated men out of the club when they had already started. Meanwhile, groom is still ignoring bride's calls. Bride demands that we all leave. Bride and groom's sister get into a physical altercation and have to be pulled apart. Bride is screaming that she is cancelling the wedding. Ex and I hightailed it out of there as it had escalated into a two family brawl. The next day groom calls ex and asks if we want to come over to watch movies with him and bride. They got married weeks later and are still married. Buddy of mine was getting married. We went out for drinks, his wife did not permit him to have a bachelor party. We drank and he told me about the abuse and how she masked it all as BDSM play, dom slash sub lifestyle. The wedding was two weeks away. Only, he hated it and only did it because he had low self esteem. She was really aggressive, she had come on to me the year before and I said no. She went so far as to wake me up by sitting on me naked on the couch when I crashed once at their place. I was drunk still thought I was dreaming at first, but came to my senses before anything terrible happened. I told him about it later, but he chalked it up as just her dumb personality. He didn't seem to care, even though I knew better. Anyway, we come home from the bar and sit in the living room and watch TV. I'm not really that drunk, but tired, so I fall asleep for a bit in a chair watching an old Mac Jivery run. He goes off to his fiancé, and I assume they are having kinky sex or something. About 30 minutes later I wake up to my buddy, putting stuff in a backpack. He says he is going to go to a hotel, he cannot stay here with her anymore. Says he will drop me home. That's when she comes out in full crotchless leather dom gear with some guy on a leash. Starts yelling at him, and doing some fairly familiar dom commands. He isn't having any of it and leaves, while yelling at her for cheating, and also leaving me there. Then, she yells at me for not trying to stop him. I just say, you are the one with handcuffs. And I walked home. The wedding was cancelled by him, and she spent the next month saying sheet about how he was intolerant of her lifestyle over my space. Yeah, I'm old. All I cared about was my buddy getting out of an abusive relationship. He is now married to one of the best women I know. So, a happy ending. Edit. She got involved with this other sub and eventually married him. He actually used to hang with us at our favorite bar a lot, but he was not a friend. She made him start wearing a male chastity piece, so he would not cheat or touch himself while she was not there. We called him penis cage from that point on, mostly because my buddy was a bit raw from the whole deal and we wanted to support him. She was really beyond abusive with him, stuff I don't want to get into here. We will say it was bad, and not your healthy BDSM. Different strokes for different folks. For some reason, a guy I know decided to have a co-ed bachelor party, and invited all of his friends from college, from youth, etc. This took place in a large city, and a lot of us that knew each other from high school all went to the same big commuter school in the city and lived with our parents through college, so it was a really unique group, lots of lifelong friends, and a bunch of new friends from college we brought into the fold. 
So here's our groom, Mr. Perpetual Life of the Party. Charismatic, fun, likes to have a good time. Marrying a total buzzkill of a girl, but damned if she isn't smoking hot. Also very very Catholic, and won't let the groom into her pants before the wedding. Groom has been pissed about this for a while, which led to some accelerated wedding plans. Anyway, co-ed bachelor party. Biggest beach house rental. Girls and guys. Turns into a total debauch fest. About half of us had dated or fooled around with each other through high school or college. So people are sneaking off in various states to do various things, everything from smooching to full on three ways. It was messy. I had really only dated a couple of girls in the group, one of whom I couldn't find, and the other was already busy getting t in a bedroom, so me and another loner girl had pity set with each other. We had just finished what turned out to be remarkably good pity sech, when we heard the door to the next room close, these old beach houses had all been renovated a bunch, to cram in as many bedrooms as possible, so the walls between were often thin. It was the groom, talking with my sort of ex, that I hadn't been able to find earlier. From what we could hear, everything, and what we learned later, it seemed that they'd been talking about the fact that the groom's bride-to-be was a real chilly person, and his lack of sech with her was really chafing. Well, you guessed it. They banged hard. Dude's known for having a monstrous gun, so the chick ended up getting really loud. Like, pretty much everyone not passed out knew the groom was railing her. So. Three days later, everyone under the age of 40 at the wedding knows the groom shut up this girl, but nobody says nothing. Four days into their honeymoon, groom comes home early and calls me and some other folks. Turns out he and the girl had been texting about their adventure while he was on his honeymoon with his wife and included a choice bit about how his new wife was bad at sech. She saw the texts. Choice offered, ditch every friend you have and stay married or leave. Guess which one he picked. Spoiler alert they have like 8 kids now. A bit late, but must add this story. College roommate engaged to college sweetheart of hers. She graduated and moved out of state for work. He had one more year of school, five year degree. He died tragically in a drunken walking incident, fell off a two story parking garage. Well, in her and his brother's fit of depression and sadness, the brother of the dead guy knocked her up. So four months after the funeral, we were all gathered again for a shotgun wedding. Only it wasn't your regular wedding. She was Indian, so it was a day long traditional ceremony. I had barely recovered from the puke flu and hate curry, so it was all I could do just to attend. The dad of the deceased spent the entire day crying on my shoulder, how wrong this all was. Well, he wasn't kidding. Within the year, his surviving son would beat the crap out of my old roommate and she filed for divorce. Add for stupid very bad humor, one of the bridesmaids was also beaten that year by her husband. Her wheelchair bound husband. Now, tell me how the fact does that happen? Really long, and too late to really get any attention on this thread, but whatever. Copied and pasted from an old journal entry I wrote about it a few years after this sheet shell happened. This happened after the rehearsal dinner the night before the wedding, but I feel like it fits here. Fun fact, they got divorced about 4 years into the marriage. I'm surprised the wedding ended up happening at all. Blame any stupidly written bits, typus, etc. on my 23 year old self who wrote this. I'm keeping a secret from my entire family, just to protect the marriage of my cousin and her husband. In August of 2005 my older cousin Monica got married to a guy named Corey. They'd been together for just over a year and a half at this time. I flew down to the wedding as a bridesmaid. I met the other bridesmaids and groomsmen, including John, the grooseman who was going to be walking down the aisle with me during the ceremony at the rehearsal dinner the night before the wedding. I'm only 20 and the only drink I had was one that my dad snuck me, so I wasn't drunk like the rest of my young Puto Rick and family was. The designated driver of our bridesmaid slash groomsman bunch was John. It's about 9pm when Monica is definitely sheet faced. She has implants, she was a Hooters waitress for a couple of years, so just envision the stereotypical Hooters waitress, and they were pouring out of her skimpy top, and she'd ask all the groomsmen to check to see if her nipples were showing. They're almostly Cora's friends, so they were kind of embarrassed and not sure what to do with a skinny, cute, big chested bride-to-be who had too much to drink. Cory decided it was time for them to go. 
Monica wanted me and her to go back with Corey to their house and spend the night watching movies and drinking some more. I was okay with this, as were my parents, and Corey obliged. John, being the designated driver, drove us, in his extremely gorgeous metallic blue Dodge VIP, back to Corey and Monica's. Then the sheet hit the fan. John was driving. Corey was in the passenger seat. I was in the back behind John, and Monica was in the back behind Corey. Monica's nice mix of liquors must hit her brain like a faking brick wall. She starts asking me things like, Jesse, do you do anal? Because if you do you could get married just like me. While her shirt is slowly falling off. I start putting her back into her shirt and Corey starts asking Monica if she's okay. She said she started feeling sick, so we made a stop at John's house, which was on the way anyway. On the way there, Corey says something like, this is so typical, to John and asks John if he can go to his dealer too. Until this night, I never knew Corey did drugs, and never would have thought it possible, since Monica has dumped guys for smoking pot. Monica flips a sheet and starts punching Corey in the back of the head saying that she won't marry him if he gets blazed the night before their wedding. As she's hitting him, we arrive at John's house. John and I leave the car to go into the house and get Monica some water while Corey and her were arguing in the driveway. We come back out less than 5 minutes later to see Monica and Corey screaming at each other. Monica still punching Corey in the chest as he's trying to restrain her arms. We give Monica the glass of water, which was real glass, not plastic or paper, and she throws it at Corey's head and the glass crashes to the ground right behind John's parked VIP. Monica runs away down the street, which is definitely causing her big tits to fall out of her shirt. Corey chases after her as she nears a main intersection about 50 yards down from John's house. I help John clean up the glass, so we can drive his car out of the driveway without getting a flat. We drive towards the intersection and see Monica flashing cars on the main road to try to get a ride. Corey tries to get her shirt back on and she's punching him. She grabs her cell phone and calls two of the other bridesmaids and tells them, he's abusing me. He hit me and knocked me down. I can't marry him. I'm never going to marry him. He hit me and he's beating me up. I finally get the phone away from her and call back the girls she called to tell them the real story. Corey and John shove Monica back in the car, and we drive off to Corey's. It's about 10.30 when we get to Corey and Monica's house. We go inside and Corey's dealer, not sure of his name, was there with some pills for him. Corey grabs them, pays the dealer, and gives them to me to hold on to. At this point the whole running incident must have cleared Monica's head, and she started apologizing. But Corey was pissed, so he took four of the pills I was holding on to. I took one, didn't really feel anything, and I don't really know what they were, with a beer. He left and said he'd be back, Monica is crying, and John left, but gave me his cell phone number in case anything gets out of hand. Funny, because I go into the bathroom to pee, and when I'm done Monica is gone. I got John to come back, and the two of us scoured the area, to find Monica calling her maid of honor in tears. I get on the phone with the girl and tell her what's really going on since I was the second most sober one out of the group. We get Monica back into the house and John leaves again. I'm talking to Monica, then Corey comes back. All Corey wants to do is go to sleep. It's about 11.30 at this point and his wedding is the next day, assuming it's going to happen. Monica is pestering him because she wants to sleep in the same bed as him, but he's still mad and just needed his space. Monica shuts the door to their bedroom saying that she and Corey are going to have a talk. Next thing I know, I hear bang, and Corey runs out of the room. Corey shoved Monica, she fell, and hit her nose on the corner of the nightstand. She had a 2 inch long gash on her nose and was bleeding. I help her up, clean her up, and call John. He gets there and I'm like, what the fuck do I do? About 5 minutes later, Corey comes back, and John and I yell at him. Monica wasn't mad, she actually started apologizing. Corey has no recollection whatsoever of even coming back to the house until then. He must have blacked out from the pills and liquor, and when we told him what he did, he freaked out. He threatened to turn himself into the cops, but after a while we just convinced them both to go to bed, so they did. The next day, I made up a huge lie about how Monica was drunk and fell over her own two feet, hitting her face on the corner of the kitchen counter. 
Everyone bought it, we were able to cover up the cut with lots of macup, and they got married. I'm the only one who was there from beginning to end, and if any of this ever leaked to my family, they'd lose all trust in me, my cousin, and especially her husband. A few months later, I got a package in the mail from Monica. It was a Kai hair straightener and a Starbucks gift card. There was a note with it that said something like, we wouldn't have made it without you. Ha. My buddy Foots and I are military reclasses, and while in 8, back in 2011, we decided to go drinking in the middle of a set of clubs in Kansas City MO. One night this bachelorette's party walks in. After about 30 minutes of watching them Foons sees this one girl sitting on the side, so he goes and flirts with her for a while. Turns out she's the groom's BFF Sarah and doesn't want him to get married, says so she only here to prove that the bride-to-be is a slutched. She pays Foons like $200 and asks him to flirt with the chick. Sarah comes and sits next to me as we watch him go try and hock up. We talk off and on for a little less than a hour about small things whether the beach bride, about us being military, and then we glance up and can't find Foonts or the bride. We walk around the multiple bars looking for them and nothing. I get a text saying parking lot row H. We head down there and find the bachelorette getting faked by Foonts and some black dude from the club. Sarah snaps a few photos maybe a video too, we wait for the guys to finish, then we walk out, Sarah shouts out the girl's name she looks up at us with that oh no look, Sarah snaps the a final picture, sends it to the bachelor, Foons and I walk away and go drink with Sarah, while the chick just lays there in a puddle of sweat tears with two dudes come dripping out of her. So when I was a teenager I used to take a 14 hour car trip to the furthest possible point in the upper peninsula of Michigan to play hockey at Michigan Tech during the summer. I'd make the trip with a few friends, a boat, a few jet skis, and our parents, since we were only about 15 to 16 at the time. We always stayed at some cabins on the shore of one of the Great Lakes that we rented from a friend of the family. Super long story short my friend put a six pack on the lowest part of the roof of one of the cabins. When I took a step back to get a running jump at it, I fell into a five foot deep dried riverbed that had been overgrown to look like it was flat land in the darkness. My friends ran back inside laughing and I came in a few minutes later laughing and calling them as holes. At this point everyone in the cabin stopped dead and just stared at me. Turned out I had broken my wrist so badly I was bent backwards, and I had blood streaming out of the back of my head. Cue a Tika police escort through the streets of Horton Hancock which is essentially as hilly as San Francisco, but completely populated by college students and backwards hicks. We arrive at possibly the smallest hospital I arrive ever soon and shortly, after I'm getting looked at a man gets wheeled in on a journey wearing a blood soaked tuxedo completely drunk out of his mind. The doctor completely abandons me and starts working on the new guy. Eventually things lead to him getting a spinal tap and some other medical procedures that are more important than my wrist and head. A few hours go by and I finally get treated and as I'm walking out there's an entire bridal party including the bride sitting in the lobby, completely covered in blood. I ask on the car ride home what happened and apparently the groom was an alcoholic who got mad at his new wife for nagging him during the reception, so he just started beating her then and there in front of her family. The members of the bride's family jumped in and beat him almost to death and the member of the groom's family were torn between helping him and defending him so just decided brawling was the best option. Pretty par for the course for the up. Took some painkillers and played hockey the next day. Ended up seeing the couple around town the next week with the bride pushing him around in a wheelchair. Didn't ask. The manager of the cafe I used to work at was getting married to one of the baristas, a German uni student, a few years back. The whole thing got blown to hell when several photos from the manager's bachelor party night leaked among the staff. Anyone who's served under the hospitality industry knows that gossip is wildfire at the best of times. Turns out the manager's old school chums and some of the older floor and kitchen staff were all packing it in for the night at a hotel they were all staying at, they went to Sydney for a massive night out. In a hoe, whole bunch of guys pile into the groom's room and start having a slash several drink or drinks whilst the groom is having a shower. Apparently old grammar habits die hard and several guys all jump in the shower and bath and just generally act like a bunch of alpha male, no homo as holes whilst waving their dicks around. 
Fast forward 15 minutes and the groom is posing for a picture with his best man, who was kneeling, with his dick almost in the best man's mouth, a joke to send to the future wife apparently. According to varied sources things went downhill from there, and by downhill I mean the best man started suking off the groom whilst the whole thing was being filmed. The footage inevitably spread, the wedding was called off, they got married a year later, he bought her a puppy or some sheet, best man admitted he's gay, groom denied being gay and a very angry German family turned up two weeks after the event to demand their daughter leaves Australia. TLDR. Hilarious joke on bachelor party night turns into amateur gay born. True story an ex co-worker was dating this real hot chick. They got engaged. The girl beached about everything. The ring was too cheap. Her car was crap. His apartment a sheet hole. Nothing was ever good enough. So to make her happy he bought her a new car. Moved to a very nice condo and the whole time he knew he could not afford it. I remember when she would call and he would excuse himself and go to an empty office and you can hear him yell at her at the top of his voice. This was almost a daily occurrence. She wanted to book a certain place, this caterer, that wedding dress, everything more than he could afford. One day the boss finally sat him down and the yelling has to stop. It does for a week. Then one day he gets a call from one of the girl's exes. Come to find out the girl has been married something like 8 times and has done the same thing over and over again. Then weeks after the wedding, she will blindside the guy and file for divorce and to be nice get about 40-50% of everything they owned as a couple. Considering she will come into the marriage with almost nothing, she made of like a bandit every time. She was a scam artist. I had a friend that was supposed to get married at the courthouse in Colorado Springs while we were in the army. It was a bullshit bachelor party since getting married at the courthouse is like getting married at the DMV. Anyway, we went out and did what we do, aka shooting guns, drinking whiskey, and eventually we ended up at a hotel on a nice resort in Co Springs near Fort Carson. Anybody who has been near the area can guess which spot, it's right under the Chien Mountain Zoo. So the night before the wedding, we have a room block of three connecting rooms, and after the party is all said and done we retire. Three guys into rooms, the bachelor has his own room with a king bed. Long story short, we go to wake up the bachelor to get some breakfast, and he's in bed with a hoker he met on back pages. His wife had installed a keyligger on his phone, so she had seen every exchange he had with this gal, and drove 30 minutes to the hotel to confront him. We walked in on her throwing a coffee pot at the hoker, who was fully naked and kinda good looking, not gonna lie, and just decided to go grab our own breakfast and come back later. They called off the wedding after a few days of deliberation and we deployed a few weeks later, but that was one of the most awkward situations I've encountered. Oh god, I'm going to get buried, but it's my time to shine. I dated slash hooked up with a woman 4 years who had this roommate who had a dodgy live-in fiancé. He liked to smoke pot and draw and play video games. He didn't work, completely lived off of his woman. At the time, I remember thinking what a sweet deal he had, but now that 10 years have passed it was very parasitic. Months pass and the date of the wedding draws closer. The guy is becoming more and more withdrawn. The bachelor party takes place a week before the wedding, and the fiancé had pulled out all the stops for him, strippers in a private room, the bus with alcohol and food, enlisted my then girlfriend to give drunk people rides. It was a blast. Right after the bachelor party, the very next day, the guy disappears. She'd been at work for 12 hours. When she got home he had moved every single belonging of his and himself out of the house. It was like he'd never existed there. The place was half bare. Fun postscript. I found out a few years later via Facebook that he was engaged to a woman I went to high school with. He left her at the altar. I guess it's good he made it that far this time. Sorry for being so long, but it has a lot of juicy details. My cousin's stepdaughter is getting married. She is at a bachelorette party with my wife and others. One of them asks her if she's gonna let her husband have sex on the wedding night, and she replies, that's the only night he's touching me. That's when we thought it was gonna be done. We were wrong. They have already gotten married since then. They never had sex before the wedding, but she has a kid that looks surprisingly like her stepfather. The idiot bought her a truck 
and put new flooring in her house and they still haven't had sex. Her husband lives in her trailer house right now while she still lives right beside them with the stepfather. SMH so basically the whole deal is she's married to a guy who she hasn't had sex with. She has a kid with her stepfather who she is still sleeping with and living with. She was also pregnant at 14, so the kid is 4 or 5 now, and if it ever comes out the stepfather's gonna do jail time. Pretty much everyone knows, or can see it except for the dude she's married to now. If I was him I never would have married her without having sex, if she already had a kid. The whole thing's about money though cause her husband makes decent money. My whole family is just sitting by waiting, until the truth comes out. This actually occurred the night before at the dress rehearsal. We're all at the groom's parents river house where the wedding is supposed to take place the next day after rehearsal, shrimp boil, and some drinks. We hop onto the boat to take down the river to a rope swing. Everyone is good and toasted, downing bottles of wine. The bride-to-be has a drinking problem that everyone is familiar with. Not like she drinks too much type drinking problem, but one where, as soon as she sips alcohol, she turns into Godzilla. So we are all having a good time at the swing when she announces that she can't find her engagement ring. Don't forget, we are in a river. That ring is gone and everyone knows it, but we try to find it anyway. She has a sort of nonchalant attitude about it, even though everyone is frantically searching for a few minutes at least. The majority of us are down to boxers or bra and panties, including the bride. A buddy of mine and I are done searching and just standing on the shore when the bride loudly announces I don't even want that ring anymore. I don't even want this bra. Then she takes it off and flings it at my buddy who catches it and tries to hand it back. She's too busy sergeant yorking it out of the river on her knees and elbows to take it back. Eventually the excitement dies down and we all try to ignore the situation unfolding with Sergeant York and her increasingly furious future husband arguing back on the pontoon boat at one point I think he may have hit her, not sure. She takes off running away from him, boobs still hanging out, and runs straight off the front of the boat, face first into the fortunately sandy shore. We spent the rest of the night trying to convince the groom it wasn't too late, which was something we'd been doing since the day they met. They got married and are still happily, for the most part, married six years later. Mine's not a there's not going to be a wedding moment, rather a bride was a worthless faking hoe at the bachelorette party and the groom found out nine months later in the delivery room moment. I was in the in the waiting room at the hospital with her parents, her BFF and her BFF's husband, when my mate walked into the room, still in his smock, in what I can only describe as a rage came straight up to me and said you need to come and help me get all of her sheet out of the house. One look at him and I could see that he was on the edge of tears, so I just got up and said let's go. His mother-in-law was demanding to know what was going on as we were walking off and he screamed at her, ask the faking hoe you raised. I didn't say a thing, just waited to hear him tell me what I'd already guessed. We got in his car and he said it was black. My son was faking black, then he burst into tears. He's a redhead and his ex is blonde. I didn't know what to say, I just told him to get out, that I was driving, and proceeded to drive him back to his house. About halfway home he gets a call from his soon, to be ex mother-in-law asking him what he intended to do about this what the fuck? He said that all your daughter's things are going to be on the street, as soon as he could get them out of his house, so maybe you, or your husband want to come get it, before anyone else does, then he hung up. She tried to phone back multiple times, but he just kept hanging up then he blocked her number. Got to his house and he took everything she owned, all the photos of them and everything she chosen to decorate the house with when stuffed it into garbage bags and I carted them out it put them in the gutter. About half an hour later, the father and the BFF's husband showed up and loaded it all into their cars. The father waited in his car while the BBF's hubby came to the door and awkwardly asked if there was anything else. I told him that was it and he said sorry then left. My mate called a locksmith and had all the locks changed then took the second car to the closest dealer and sold it that day. He said he didn't want anything of her left in his house and it was his house. When he got home he phoned his lawyer and proceeded to try and drink the entire liquor cabinet dry. I stayed more or less sober 
so I could keep an eye on him and make sure he didn't do anything stupid. It all came out in the wash a few days later. His then fiance slept with a black stripper on her hen's night and let him come in her, worthless faking slutch that she is. Late to the party. We had an epic bachelor party for a buddy of mine. Started drinking Friday, wedding was Monday. So we are keeping him sheet faced. Multiple strip clubs and strippers. Guy rented a limo to carry us around for the weekend. Orlando not that that matters. Saturday night I remember someone had somehow gotten a bowling ball and drilled a hole in it and bolted a leg cuff to it and latched it to his ankle and he was so drunk he was sitting on a concrete car stop in a parking lot beating it against the pavement trying to get it off. So Sunday morning we are getting ready go grab breakfast and hit another strip club, taking it easier because we have to be able to prop him up the next day because the bride is a friend of everyone and beloved by all. As soon as they started dating she went above and beyond to ingratiate herself to his friends and is a legit sweetheart who we all like and she'll kill us if we don't get him to the wedding at least able to stand up and say I do and look alive for the pictures. And he's gone. I mean really gone. Like we cannot find him. All his cloths are still in his hotel room. His wallet is still in his pants from the night before. He's just gone. So we start a search of the hotel. Call the front desk. Noon remembers seeing him. Call his finance. She hasn't heard from him. So we panic and call the cops. They show up and review the security feed and they hears in a pair of shorts walking out of the hotel at about 6am. That evening we are all at his fiancé's family's house and we get a collect call from New Orleans. He had somehow gotten out of the hotel and onto a greyhound and was now in Louisiana. He has shorts, shoes, and a hotel room key for a hotel that's a 10 hour drive away. He's crying. The bride is crying. We are fighting between relief he's alive. Panic that there's no way we can get him and get him back in time for the wedding. They got married on Tuesday in front of a judge and she absolutely still blames us and reminds us every chance she gets. She came home unexpectedly from the bachelorette party, crashing the bachelor party. She had been planning to stay at a hotel room near the wedding site with the bridesmaids. She yelled a few what is going on here, s, and then declared the wedding is off and ordered the groom into the bedroom. We sobered up immediately and began cleaning up with the help of all but one of the bridesmaids. They confided in us that all was going well and the maid of honor, sick, had showed up, although she said she couldn't make it. She was a teetotaling biatch, I heard from them, never got close enough to find out and riled the bride up with stories of what those boys were doing. Suddenly the bride had to go home and check on him. What we were actually doing, getting refills from the keg in the alley, spilling a little on the polyurethane wood floors, which we would have cleaned up, of course, and watching bad born us to laugh at them. The cops came by twice to quiet us down and confided in us that we were the quietest party they had ever been called to quiet down, but regardless, if our neighbors called a third time they'd have to shut us down and cite us. We apologized and promised to not talk outside while getting beers and offered them beers if they dropped by after their shift. They thanked us and left, smiling. The bride was and is a world-class drama queen she eventually dumped him but used him as a babysitter whenever she had a hot date. Now, he's a good daddy and loved spending time with his kid but she's a good Catholic so she didn't use condoms and got pregnant again with someone else's kid who didn't stick around so she'd stick him with babysitting that other guy's fact fruit. Eventually she realized she'd never catch anything that paid as well as his job, so she remarried him. He did it for the kid and to save alimony and travel time. Never fact crazy. But if you do, you say condom and for God's sake don't marry it. Well, not quite. I threw my ex best friend a bachelor party. He didn't faking show up. Faking some other chick, but nobody knew that at the time. He was sneaking around and wasn't where we thought he'd be when we were supposed to abduct him and take him to the strip club. Well, we all had a great time anyway. Wedding happened. They lasted about 15 months. 10 years later, I'm divorcing my now ex because she's a lying cheating hoe. I find out that she was the one faking my ex best friend that night before we were married, but they faked after we were married too.
and he wasn't the only one. Anyway, good riddance to bad rubbish. Edit. Oh, and while ex-best friend and his fiance were dating, she actually tried to come on to me, and I brushed it off. Also, years earlier, the girl he was dating then, who was smoking hot, also tried to come on to me. Didn't break the bro code. Because I gave him the heads up on the first one, I couldn't bear to do that to him a second time, and just hoped that his fiance would behave herself. Turns out it wasn't her we had to worry about. Four buddies were getting married pretty close to each other, September, October, and two in December. So we get 16 dudes and do a massive batch party Labor Day weekend, first Monday in September for you non-yanks. We get on a cruise to Mexico, and most of us don't remember much more than running out of our 15 drink limit before 1pm on the first day. Aftermath. Two guys ended up in a, one with a broken foot, one with a massive concussion, six went to urgent care, mostly dehydration and drug come downs and stitches, one guy forgot everything on the dock so had to wear the same clothes for 5 straight days one guy missed his flight back to Philadelphia, almost all of us skipped out on work. The next week. The girls called around to each other and pieced some of the stories together. And since 16 dudes can't perfectly collaborate stories there were lots of lies, I don't remember. I was f at ash ked up, it was Mexico, what did you expect? All of the brides to be were pissed. But there were, so many fingers being pointed, that they couldn't pin it on their man. So the weddings were saved. At the four weddings we decided not to talk about the bachelor party. Except the story where the 44 year old lady offered the guy in the wheelchair before we knew he had a broken foot, a foot job because she thought disabled people were hot, and she had a foot kink. We didn't tell her he wasn't disabled, he just jumped off a balcony while drunk and broke his foot. Advice, don't get on a cruise to Mexico with 15 of your idiot friends a couple weeks before you get married. I met this couple at a party through a friend of mine, and they immediately rubbed the the wrong way. The fiancé Kay left pretty soon after introductions, so I didn't know her that well. I end up talking to the husband-to-be, and he just keeps repeating that he loves her, but doesn't know if he wants to marry her. This was the moment I knew they weren't getting married. After being on the receiving end of drunken slurring and slight spitting, I ask my friend what's up with them. She proceeds to tell me that they got together because they got into drugs together. Solid foundation. No one thought they would last, but save the dates went out. At their engagement party, apparently, I wasn't there. The girl asked her to be husband for a drink and he only comes back with a drink for himself. She proceeds to absolutely lose her sheet about it, and his mom and sister jumped in and said that she doesn't know how to treat him and she's no good for him etc. She then proceeds to break down their bedroom door in anger and they take him to a hotel for the night. Apparently, they still tried to work it out even after his friends have him an intervention. The wedding invites went out after all of this. After the second intervention, he decides to have a bachelor party by himself to wallow in his sorrows of not marrying her and blows $25,000 in a strip club. 2001, our bachelor slash bachelorette parties were the same night. Unplanned, the parties ended in the same place, that was a bar, that also had bands. An 80s cover band was playing that night, that we both liked. I walk in with my friends, grab a table towards the back of the bar, and as I'm sitting down, one of her friends came up to me and says, you need to go to the men's room. Confused by this comment, but I went ahead and go. I walk in, and hear a woman moaning. After about 5 seconds of this, I recognize who it is, and it is my fiancé. I climb up a urinal, and look into the stall to see her drunk, bent over at the waist getting faked from behind by her ex-boyfriend. I reach down to her hand, remove the ring, and step down off the urinal. At this point, the bouncer was standing in the doorway watching. My ex freaked out, pulling her clothes up, and left the bathroom. Her ex got defensive with me, trying to blame me for the situation, etc. He throws a punch at me, misses. I grab the back of his head and bounce his face off the hand dryer in the bathroom. Broke his nose. The bouncer grabs him and throws him in the cab that's outside the back of the bar. I left, went back to my apartment, and packed all her stuff in a box I could find, and when FedEx opened, I shipped her stuff to her apartment. 
We didn't talk again until 2013. I'm the bride to be. My so's bachelor party was this weekend. I was never quite worried about any of this, especially since we grew up together and share so many friends. Silly me thought I could trust these guys. He left last Friday and we barely said goodbye to each other. I mean, he was so excited to spend the weekend with his buddies. Our friends told me not to worry, they were making him their beach for the weekend. Well, my so came back on Sunday. I felt something was wrong, but didn't want to bother him. He finally opened up to me and said the guys had a nasty stripper for the weekend. She was a mess, she had over 200 beers this weekend, would fall all over the place, would let the guys grab her as for money, and would strip terribly. When my so finished his story, I only had one question, they really made you their beach, didn't they? He now understands how annoying stockings are, and why I hate walking in heels. Plus, he made quite a bit of money from letting his friends grab his sexy ass. Of course the wedding's still on. The guys even sent me two photos of their stripper. I was the best man of my best friend's wedding. For his bachelor party we couldn't do anything related to drinking, gambling, or strippers. To make up for it, we went to a concert one night and the next day we went bowling and go-karting. During the concert, his fiancé would not stop texting him. To the point where he wasn't even able to watch the show. Her texts were asking him if he was enjoying hot dates and basically accusing him of cheating. Fast forward to the next day and we are going to go do the previously mentioned things and then go to my parents for a cookout. We leave at 1pm and the groom says we have to be back by 6 so I can pick up the missus from work. She has her license and a car, she just refuses to drive. Also, at the time she still lives with her parents who can pick her up. So we go do our thing and we end up running late. Yes he had to text her the whole time. As we are running late, my buddy decides he should call her dad and see if he can pick her up from work, which he agrees to doing. So, we cold vended up staying longer bowling or doing whatever. We get back to my parents where my mom, who was going through chemo and had terrible nausea around food, cooked a bunch of food and my dad was grilling out for us. All of this, I had bought for the party. We end up sitting down for 30 minutes while we waited for dinner to be ready and the groom has to leave to go spend time with his fiancé. Doesn't say thanks to my mom or dad for cooking food and just leaves. They ended up getting married still, despite everyone's objections. Not the most exciting story in the world, but still shitty. My friend was getting married and I knew something wasn't right. We knew where the bachelorette party was, I was extremely familiar with the layout of the venue that they had rented out, so I said that we should go look and see what happened. I was suspicious for two reasons, none of my friend's circle of friends or sisters or cousins were invited, and she had called him several times during his bachelor party, which she demanded, consist of a low-key meal and a movie type get together with her dad and brother both being invited. My friend reluctantly agreed to the spy mission. The building was an old county expo building that was not isolated from civilization or anything, but it was a bit away from everything. Another suspicious thing in hindsight. So we get there. We go up to the windows and you could see inside, but there was a wall of backs in front of the window. Couldn't see anything other than the backs of the party. Music was blaring kind of loud. Buddy gets pissed, demands we storm in. I tell him to follow me. The building has a fire escape on the second floor that had a broken lock. It was what we call a combination door in country slang. If you pushed in and pulled up at the right time, it would open. Worth a shot. We get to the door. It opens. Jackpot. I'm kind of excited to see it all blow up because I never liked the girl anyway. We quietly walk to a balcony area overlooking the stage and y'all gotta admit. No joke, the bride is laying on her back getting her box munched by a woman with nothing but like an eyes wide shut mask on. At the other end of her, there is a guy with the same style mask on, with no clothes, gently faking her face with his shockingly large penis. And that's not the worst part. The worst part is that there are two women and a man on another little makeshift bed beside them, and they are also having a threesome. One woman is riding the man's face. One is riding him. We sit there in complete shock. This stuff is sexy inborn, but devastating in real life. 
As we stand there paralyzed, the girl riding the man's face gets up, sits over the man's chest, and fires a spray sheet right on him. Everyone gasped sucking that sheet in the air, folks. They gasped. The girl sucking the guy's dick throws up. The fiancé throws up. The woman eating the fiancé dry heaves. And, yep, throws up. They all stand up and take off their masks. It's all the Finn case family. They turn to the crowd, Bo, and say and we call it, the aristocrats. Cousin went on bachelorette party in Vegas. What happened in Vegas did not stay in Vegas. Almost cousin-in-law asked maid of honor directly if cousin had remained faithful to him in Vegas. Her poor said a thousand words. Spilled the beans that my cousin had allegedly gotten very drunk and slept with a fireman. I feel bad for my not cousin-in-law as he had just sold his diesel trunk to settle debt for a house down payment and had to sell the engagement ring he had spent over $2,000 on. My aunt and uncle are hyper-religious Christians. I have no idea how that transpired after the fact, but I bet it was insanely satisfying to hear her explain why suddenly their exorbitantly expensive, dry, wedding was called off. I haven't seen my cousin since, and I have no idea what I will say to her the next time I see her they dated for a good 4 years. For the record, my aunt, dad's only sister, and uncle have more or less shunned my family out of their little circle, because we're not hyper-religious, and we also harbored the same cousin when she attempted to move out of their house at age 19. Had this guy I went to college with, he wrote for the paper and tried his hand at books. Hit sit big with his debut. Well anyhow, his best friend played football for our school and went on to the NFL. He finally settles down and is getting married. The three of them, along with the bride, was close friends. As a wedding gift he gives them an early draft of his next book. They manage to read it the week leading up to the ceremony. Now, don't let the author title fool you. This guy hasn't always been the brightest bulb. This book is semi-autographical and come to find out it's painfully obvious when reading it. In the book there's a character who's a popular athlete who facts everything that walks. We all know who that is. The girlfriend in the book, who is obviously the bride Irol, knows this and decides to have revenge set with the protagonist. They confront each other at the bachelor party in front of everyone over this tryst that happened before their successes. Athlete kicks his ass and proclaims to everyone in the room, the moth of faking wedding is off. Everyone is flawed. They spent a fortune won everything. They eventually got married to no one's surprise. You have to keep up appearances right. I went off with a buddy a few weeks before his upcoming wedding to wine country. We have visits to vineyards, tasting some great food and possibly some golf as well. He meets some girl at a tasting, and as it turns out, she knows a hot married chick I've been listing after after, but no she is married. Turns out she got a divorce, so all four of us start hanging together for our week. He starts screwing around with her, and I play dumb with the other girl about his upcoming wedding. She finds out, and breaks his nose with a motorcycle helmet. He gets fixed up, and we arrange a fake car accident to explain it to his future wife and in-laws. The hot girl I finally banged, wants nothing to do with me. While out having dinner, meets another girl and they go to her place together, and he gets caught in flagrant delicto by the woman's husband, while my friend is faking her in the ass. He panicked and bolted sans clothes and wallet which has their wedding bands, which I have to go retrieve. The guy runs after, his dick flapping against window as I drive off. Marriage goes off, and I call up the girl to explain things, and she leaves a nice message. I drive back up, to wine country to visit her Anne. I should start this story asking women, why do some of you have bachelorette parties on a strip club? I was in this strip club 3 months ago, by myself, when I see a bachelorette group coming and sighting near me. The bride sees that I'm alone and smiles at me, while I smiled back out of courtesy. I got a lap dance and chose what it looks like the thickest girl there, because I love thick girls. I loved it. Soon after my lap dance ended, the bride starts dancing off with her group to the man I feel like a woman song, and omg she is dancing so damn sexy I could not help myself but to watch directly. She was a little chubby, which I found incredibly irresistible. Then she stares at me, and I fake and froze. She starts to play along, 
and starts walking towards me. She asks me to sit, and there she is, giving me the hottest free lap dance on the planet. I grabbed and groped her, and was so turned on I came right there, and then security staff comes to me and whispers, hey, this is not happening here. I go back to my chair alone, and she is so turned on. I leave the club, and outside I bump into one of her friends, and while asking about her, she replies, we had a fight, because my other friend took a picture of us with the bride on the background giving me a lap dance. On the picture they say, they captured the moment, when I was sucking on her breasts, while she is on top of me. I feel like sheet, because my horniness ruined a chubby girl's wedding. Edit, the picture of me sucking on her breast was taken, and sent to one of the groom's best friends. But her breasts were top choice meat. I still beat off thinking about that night.